Is your retirement investing the best it can be? Stay tuned. Welcome to this week's edition of Note School TV. Well, where every Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time, we bring you the most amazing guests as well as the most amazing content. And well, this week, yes, our guest is uh, truly amazing. Great episode. Uh, and we'll get on with that in just a second. Let's do a little housekeeping before we get started. Number one, make sure and hit that like button. Yes, please. We know many of you, so many of you watch, but you, for some reason, forget to hit that like button. So hit that like button for us. Also, uh, if you have not already subscribed to our Note School TV channel, make sure and go ahead and do that uh, as well so that you will be, well, be advised when we're about to go live. And then number three, make sure and hit that bell notification. Boom. So, well, it'll let you know when we're just, just about ready to uh, jump on there and go live every Wednesday at 11.05. Uh, also, continue to send us in your comments, your questions. Uh, we truly appreciate you doing that. So please continue to do that as well. And if you would like to know more about what we do at Note School, simply go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. Again, noteschool.com forward slash TV. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, bring up the news. So, yep, as we've been reporting, well, for quite a few months now, um, almglobesbest.com again reports just yesterday that confidence in multifamily continues to slide. So the concerns in the sector have been growing as rent growth, we know, has stalled and transaction volumes have dropped significantly. Yes, they continue to drop. And wow, the Federal Reserve has categorized multifamily with office, yes, with office, as being the more concerning areas of the uh, commercial real estate markets. And uh, well, biggest transaction decline really has been in multifamily, and it has declined 50% uh, by the end of the first quarter of this year. So, yes, it is still a challenging uh, market to be in. Uh, the National Association of Home Builders, which reported on this as well, uh, echoes the uh, those claims as well. So with that, um, let's, uh, well, let me introduce our uh, our host for today, right? <laughs> our Note School Chief Visionary Officer, um, Note School's founder, all around great guy, um, and and Eddie's better half, uh, Miss Martha Speed. So, Eddie, you and Martha, jump on. Hello, Joe. Well, hey, how you doing? Hey, Martha. Hey, Joe. How's it going? We're all, we're good. We're all good. Well, we certainly appreciate you agreeing to be on today. You look great. Can't wait to see you here in a couple of days at Summer Summit that we've got coming up this week. So yeah, a lot of exciting things happen. So I'm going to jump off and uh, Eddie, you guys have a great interview and I'll see you on the backside. Joe, before you, before you leave, I wanted to, to give the audience a little bit of a history here. Yeah. So we have uh, we have a storyboard to our podcast, and that storyboard is is what students want to hear about. Right? That's people right. that are interested in learning the business, and there we, we have a very defined list based on what people have told us. Right. And a lot of people are really interested in learning about investing with notes with IRAs. And so Joe and I were discussing it, and we said, "Who is the ultimate most successful person associated with our companies that we can think of at doing that?" And the answer is, it happens to be my wife. That's exactly right. Yes, and Eddie and I were texting. I think Martha must have been driving, and I said, "Eddie, what do you think?" He goes, "Martha," and I go, "Sure, I'll call her." And he says, "Yes." And so I call her, and they're in the vehicle together. So. <laughs> I'm like, what's he put you up to, Joe? Why didn't he put that <laughs> <end> up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I said, hey, I have you know, a big ask. <laughs> oh. People know what I call. I want something, right? So I have to <laughs> that. 
All right, guys, you guys are going to, it's going to be a great show. So okay. uh, we'll see you in a minute. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> All right. Well, I really do mean that. You have really Thank conquered you. this very well. And I think a lot of people want to hear about this and they want to hear about kind of a big picture of what you've done. And so let's talk about kind of the beginning. Okay. Like, sure. you, like why did you pick notes to buy with retirement account investing money? Uh, well, I chose notes uh, because, and I, um, of course, because we lo we love buying notes, right? I mean, we love the cash flow. We like um, the fact that it's it's not as time consuming. I've owned a lot of rentals. It's not as time consuming as, as rentals can be. I'm not saying they're always time consuming, uh, but you know, if you don't get that perfect tenant in there, then you know you you've got a lot of work to do there to re reload the property over and over. So, um, and I love the rentals. It's not that we don't like them, but you know, we we um, we felt like for a self-directed IRA account that, that the notes were the best option. Um, and so a lot of people don't know this, but years ago, um, and the way we, we really got excited about investing with a self-directed IRA is we had a very, very good friend uh, out of California that was running um, a self-directed uh, company, a custodial company. And, you know, she actually came to us and other friends that we know here in Texas uh, because they wanted a franchise. And so we actually looked at owning a custodial company um, and we decided at that time it was not right for us because I still had very young, um, I had toddlers still at home and that I just, it would just be too much for us to take on at the time because I would have had to run it. So um, but I learned so much. That's when we really started digging in and learning what all can we do with these accounts and uh, the different types of accounts and how does all this work? Because I think that's part of it that everyone has got to learn uh, is what can you do and what you can't do, you know? So, you know, what's pro a prohibited transaction and, you know, who can you invest with and those kind of things. Um, so that's how it all got started. Yeah. So you have become an expert in, in self-directed retirement account investing. I think, uh, you know, some of the key industry experts would point to Martha and say, Martha probably knows more about self-directed retirement account investing with notes than just about any client that they can think of or any person they can think of. So let's go back to Martha, the companies, the self-directed IRA companies. You can't call Swab and they'll let you buy a note, right? No, you cannot. So there's specialist companies. Talk about that for a minute. Well, you you've got to, you know, if you do not have, if you don't don't already have your IRA account uh, with a custodian that will let you self-direct. That's what you're looking for. So it, it doesn't matter who you have it with, they've been doing the investment for you. And if you want to con take control of your investments, then what you'll need to do is transfer over to a self-directed custodian, self-directed IRA custodian. And so, um, you know, there, there are a lot of them out there. I'm sure you know the ones that we work with. Um, and um, so, it allows you to take control of that money and, and actually invest it yourself. Um, so it's just a matter of jumping out there and finding the right custodian that fits you. Um, and of course I know note school can help you with some of that. If you need a referral or want to talk to anybody here about the different companies that, that we are familiar with, that we know about, that we do a lot of business with um, and that we find that are easy to work with. Yeah. So that's, there's, there's about a hundred of these companies around the country that allow you to buy notes and real estate and unique assets that, that, you know, the more institutional investors don't, won't necessarily let you do. And, and these may be an institution, they may be a trust, but they are more flexible in the, <clears throat> the things that they allow their clients to invest in. So, Yes, that is part of what somebody has to learn. And as Martha said, you have to learn some do's and don'ts. And I think we do a pretty good job of teaching that. Yeah. Uh, Martha, I want to go back though a little bit. I want to backtrack mm -hmm. just a little bit if we can. I want to talk about notes. You have very specific types of notes that you like to buy. Mm -hmm. And and so tell the audience what that is. Well, for me personally, um, in <clears throat> buying notes for a self-directed retirement account, 
um, or just for us personally. Um, you know, I like notes that have a longer term. Um, I want, you know, I want to see a very consistent payment history because I want to buy a loan that's going to pay that's performing well. And I'm not so caught up in, you know, what's the interest rate or that kind of thing, or what is my yield that I'm going to earn? I'm not so caught up in that because I want a good investment. I want something that's going to pay consistently. And, um, and, you know, we know everybody has some ups and downs from, you know, now and then, but that's okay. Uh, but we want something that really has a good payment history that has a long term. And, you know, that allows us to, to work different models um, and, kind of, you know, decide what do we want to do with this asset? Um, and I, I personally uh, maybe like a little bit more a higher payment than some people might like, uh, but that's just me. I mean, you know, it, it varies, you know, once it starts falling down to a low payment, it's kind of hard for me to work the model that I, I prefer um, to work or, you know, if it's, you know, a payment that won't, uh, that I can't structure the way I want to, I just keep the payment. That's what I do. And you need the diversity. You need to do different things in your retirement account. You don't want to just work one model all the time. So you need to have some diversification within your account. <clears throat> so Martha, you've done you and I's IRA account. You've, you've helped our kids mm -hmm. with their IRA accounts. We have a health savings account, right? You've helped our kids with Coverdale educational accounts and now our grandkids. You've helped your mother with her yes. retirement account, even your grandmother. Yes. Right. So understand Martha has taken this model and now been able to build family legacy with it. Right. Yes. Because it's not just you've taken your knowledge and imparted that skill set over into that. Now you have used a particular technique a lot, not every time, but you've used a particular technique a lot. And this has given you the ability to buy way more notes for way more money than you physically had in a retirement account. That's correct. How have you done that? Well, uh, the model that we have used, as many of you may be familiar with, is what we call our partial model. Um, we learned it back in the 70s when uh, my dad started buying notes. Him and his partner actually did this very same model. And so we were very familiar with it. We, it, it's just an amazing way to, um, to be able to acquire a loan and recoup your investment money and then keep the back end of the loan. And so it's just a simple situation where you're selling um, a part of the loan to a passive investor for around, you know, about the same amount as what the acquisition is. And so you would coop your money very quickly and then you just go out and, you know, you're able to do this, the same model over again. And um, so, and then the other thing, if you've got some money coming in, you've got some cash flow coming in. So then that's what gets the ball rolling and you just keep building up those funds. And um, that way you just keep reinvesting basically. And not only is that great, for, for me or for my account, but the partial investors love it as well because they take that cash flow that's coming in and they can and we can actually target and actually you know calculate how much they're going to have in a certain number of months and how much they might want to buy or need to buy the next asset. So they know in six months and eight months and 12 months, they're going to be able to add another asset to their portfolio. Can I talk with my hands? I'm sorry. Was I doing that? I no, no, no. <laughs> no can me? I talk with my hands? <laughs> because I'm going to use a little analogy here. And we're going to say that this is a stream of payments right here. This is 20 years at $1,000 a month. Okay. It's the timeline, right? Right. So what you're saying that you do is that you buy all of those payments in your self-directed retirement account. Yes. That's correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. the then you time. turn around and you sell half of those payments, the, About. the yeah. first half. And if you paid $80,000 to buy all of those payments, mm -hmm. you sell this payment stream the first 10 years, mm -hmm. you sell that payment stream for uh, 79,000 bucks. 
That's correct. That means you have a thousand dollars invested for the back 10 years of that note. That's correct. So I have, I have money invested in my residual that will revert back to me. That's and Martha, correct. as I like to say, if that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. Uh, so Martha had literally Martha has done this so much in uh, our environment that it, at the note school level, we call this the Martha model, right? Literally. And because she's done it and done it all really correctly. And she's worked with the right people that's given her legal and administrative advice and those kind of things. And so we're teaching what Martha really perfected and that's a note school model. And so Martha, now you've, really quite honestly influenced literally no kidding thousands of people with this um, model, but you really kind of perfected. Well, I, I really appreciate Eddie giving me the credit for that. But the reality is, is that I, I and a lot of you know this and may, a lot of you may not, but you know, I worked for my dad right out of high school. I was 17 years old, went to work for him and I, I learned the business. Um, and I, and that was one of one of what I basically did was, um, you know, back then we had oh, I know you got a lot of you guys don't understand this, but we typed all these documents on Selectric 2 typewriters, the IBM Selectric 2 or even started before they had the Selectric 2. So um, so I that was part of what I did. I processed all these documents. And uh, so I, I learned it from the master that him and his partner were just just excellent at what they were doing. And, but then I applied it to self-directed retirement accounts. And um, so I can't really take all the credit, but I can say I've starting at 17, if you knew uh, how old I was now, <laughs> there's a lot of years of practice there. So. So it's kind of funny, Martha and I knew this model really well in our company. We literally did over 20,000 partials just as a company. Right. And right. then all of a sudden, we kind of woke up and went, oh, the answer's right in front of our nose. Yeah, like we, we could have been doing this in a self-directed retirement. Account. And so then all of a sudden we said, well, wait a minute. And then we explained it to somebody that ran a self-directed retirement account administration company. And they're like, we said, could you do this? And they're like, oh my God, you could. And so then from there, we mm -hmm. really started really morphing and doing it. And as we said, Martha Martha told you, like she sells that front end investor, that front end of the payments to a passive investor. Now they like the fact that Martha's not going to go get her payments until they get their payments. So she, they like that. And then also, but that's given an incredible leveraging technique. So we mentioned our grandkids and we mentioned our kids. They didn't start out with hundreds of thousands of dollars in the account. Well, no, and and I didn't start out with hundreds of thousands of dollars in Eddie's account either. Um, so, you know, Eddie was um, kind of in the same position as maybe a lot of you where, um, you know, they had, I guess, a 401k or some type of profit sharing with um, their payroll company. It was kind of all intertwined, you know, payroll insurance, yeah. you know, their retirement account. So we actually moved Eddie's out to a self-directed account. And uh, we didn't really at the time have much even in that account. So um, it's just a matter of working with your investors that you're selling the partial to. Uh, many of you that have done a lot of closings, if you are a real estate investor, if you're a real estate agent, you're familiar with just doing a simultaneous close. Um, so, you know, that's an option. And I, when I, when I work with my investors, you know, I, we really get to know each other. Um, and so I feel like they, they have a confidence in me. Um, we, you know, there's, there's nothing hidden. They know what, what I'm doing. They know what's going on. They understand the process and what I'm looking to do and what their needs are. And so it just merges and becomes, uh, beneficial for both parties. And so it works very well. It's just a matter of being, you know, open and honest about this is what I, I need to do in this particular account. And so, you know, but once they, once you've gained their trust and you do have to, it takes time, it takes time to do that. So you just got to know that if you're going to do something like that, you've got to have an investor lined up and ready to go um, so that things um, kind of run through the system smoothly and everything um, gets done the way it should be. And, you know, all the servicing gets set up and those first few payments roll over to your investor. All right. So we've talked a lot about IRA investing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that can be 
you know, multiple different, seven different in retirement accounts, right? Yeah. Depending on the story and the situation, we can connect you with a firm to find out what's best for you based on the company you have or what your employment is or where your money is. But let's talk about something a lot of people don't know about, Martha, which is a Coverdell account. Well, um, the wonderful thing about a Coverdell account is, um, well, you know, there's always good and bad, right? So the most you can contribute is $2,500. Um, but then as you find ways to grow that account, uh, the nice thing about it is that um, you can change the beneficiary. You know, if you're doing this for your grandchildren, which is the perfect situation. And I know a lot of you may be doing this for your children as well. Um, but you, you know, as your children grow up, instead of having multiple accounts, well, you might, you know, let the beneficiary be the oldest. And then as they grow out of needing it, then you let, you know, can trans transfer the beneficiary interest to another child. And so um, that's a great thing about it. And then it can be used for any educational purposes. So it's not necessarily just school or college, um, you know, because if your if your children want to do something outside of going to college, you know, and they want to just jump into a business, um, then this allows that this you can use this money to help them do that. Um, it's have, but it has to be for education. Like let's say you you know note school, you could actually pay for your kids to go to note school through your Coverdell account, um, and that's just an example. And you uh, can do say, a partial, you can do the same strategy we've discussed. You can do the same strategy. And, and keep $2,500 invested. And yet it pays back over a hundred grand. That's a pretty, what's the yield on that, Martha? I don't know because I don't have my calculator. <laughs> well, it's high. <laughs> I'd have it's to high. Have all the right? <laughs> I see. I'd have to have all the numbers. That he's just like, it's good. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so the, it, it is, it's just, it's a great account. And I, I really urge you, if you have kids or grandkids to look into it and see, you know, what, what all is available through a Coverdell and um, how it might benefit you. The other thing is, uh, you know, anybody like, like my mother can make the contribution. It's not like I have to make the contribution um, every year. My mother can make the contribution or, you know, any of your, any, anybody, any of your relatives or anyone, you know, can make a contribution, can make that annual contribution to the account. And I have to say, make the annual contribution. It adds up and you need it when you get started. And then as you grow the account, maybe you might not need it, but it's always nice. It's 2,500 or somewhere yeah. in that range. I don't know if it's changed recently, but um, make, make the contribution because um, it does make a difference in the long run. Here's another one, health savings account. Well, the health savings account is to me, even that, you know, it's, <clears throat> I, I want to say they're both beneficial, but I really like the health savings in more ways because you can contribute more. Uh, and then um, you can recoup um, the, uh, the, the money that you make for major, maybe major expenses. You know, we don't necessarily just pay our, you know, general medical expense out of it because we're trying to grow the the funds so that you know we can take more out at retirement to re retirement or if we need it you know for something you know that we can apply it to that's more beneficial for us um and then you know as you make your contribution it's a tax deduction for you also the point is martha that you can take your retirement you can take education you can take uh, your health insurance. You can take all of these things that uh, do have some limitations as to how much money you can put in per year. You can use a leveraging technique mm -hmm. as we've discussed, right. and you can then all of a sudden take a little amount of money and make it really turn into a significant amount of money. You can do that. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, of course, Eddie and I have, well, not Eddie, but I have personally, uh, I took this on um, a while back <clears throat> to really grow our account. And, you know, it, it's, it's like I treated it as if it were a business. Um, I, I'm not saying I made a business out of every investment that, or out of, you know, investing the money. That's not what I'm saying because it is a retirement account and it, it is for retirement and you've got to make different types of investments. But um, I just really um, just was able to just focus on it. 
Um, it was a good time. Our kids were grown. We didn't have grandkids. So it was a good time for us to really jump in there and just make it a real effort to, to get where we wanted to go with it. And I would say we, we, we've met some of our goals, um, not all of our goals, but some of them. And uh, so we're just moving forward from there. Yeah. So I'm, I run a number of businesses and, and I'm very busy doing that. And Martha and I made an agreement, like Martha knows how to invest. She was willing to go learn some specifics, which now we have a lot more of a compression of time and somehow somebody learns it because Martha's helped us with that and like knowing the key things that people need to know. And, and so she really did a lot of research and understanding of it, but it became a way that, we could take this business that we were connected with and then all of a sudden really turn it into something pretty dynamic. And, you know, Martha, I would say that uh, one thing that I would say about all of our kids is that by the time they were in high school, they completely understood how you were doing this. Yeah, they of course, they came to a lot of our classes and uh, and, and looked at a lot of assets and so um, very interestingly, they could actually explain it to their economics teacher, right? And, and what an amazing thing that they learned it and um, that they can invest in the business. Um, they, they also like real estate just like I do. So, you know, you need to, like I said, you need to have some diversity. And um, it's, that's really the legacy, I would say. Um, is the fact that we've been able to teach our children how to invest. Um, and it's not that they, you know, may not find other things to invest in. Uh, you know, we, you know, like, like as many of you know, um, so, you know, we, we've got alternative investments too. Uh, but, you know, it's just so nice that we've left them with something that's a multi-generational legacy. Not only, um, you know, the fact that, you know, if you build your portfolio up, that there's, you know, probably enough cash flow there that it will transfer over to another generation. Or in our case, it took care of my mom when my dad passed away in his late fifties yep. and we just kept reinvesting her money and she had enough cash flow that it, it's taken care of her all these years. And, um, you know, she's, um, 87 years old. So, um, that's been a blessing. Um, but just the fact that, you know, um, it's nice to know that we've affect, you know, not only, you know, feel like it's been a legacy type situation for our, for me, for my, for us, for our kids, but you know, that so many people are learning from it and that so many other people have the opportunity to do the very same thing. We don't ever meet anybody that comes to note school that says I have no interest in legacy. Now your legacy could be a charity or your legacy could be something where you don't have the family dynamic that we have, but everybody says, I want to leave a mark. And what we say is this strategy makes your legacy creativity, not just the, how much money you can throw at it. Right. Right. The creativity is what throws the money at it. It so, does. That is exactly right. And every deal is different. I'm telling you, every single transaction is different and you do have to be creative at looking at notes and, what you want to, how you, what you want to do with them and how, how you want to structure things, how you want to structure it. So, um, but it's, uh, to us, it's a, a great, a great model. And, um, I, you know, we just, we wish you the best and, and we want everybody to, to learn how to, how to structure this model in a way that it works for them. So you can now see why I say for the last 42 years, I've been the luckiest guy on earth. Uh, because I not only married a pretty woman, but I married a very smart woman that was very focused in loving her family and was willing to go uh, help us all uh, do this and implement this. So I am forever grateful for that. And uh, we're grateful that you shared your story. You're welcome. It's nice to be with you today. And uh, I hope it benefits you. And I hope you can jump out there and learn more. Mr. Joe. Two things, guys. Number one, you guys are so cute together. You just, I mean, you're just, 
seriously, no joking about that. You just, you just, you just mesh, right? Well, I really That's, do like my husband. I know you do. I, <laughs> I, I love him, him, but I really I like him. him. <laughs> so <laughs> That's really significant. Yeah, but you know, is. Martha, the Martha model, as we've called it, has changed <clears throat> so many lives. I mean, you, I mean, sometimes you just don't realize that. But the Martha model has changed so many lives. And I just remember a live event that we did. I think it was, it was either in Portland, I think it was in Portland a few years ago when you were there. And all of the, it was a three-day class and all the ladies just, I had them come up on the front row because they were just ecstatic about you being there. And just, <laughs> and just it was, it was, you know, it's amazing. So, well, I, and I appreciate know. it. I really do. I appreciate yeah. it. Maybe it's time for a women's mastermind, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. We, we've done several over the years. We just, um, you know, I've had some health issues and haven't been able to do it uh, recently, but, you know, maybe we can get something like that going again. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's the, you know, it's our, uh, you know, our ladies uh, of, of uh, you know, in note school, it's about a 50, 50, uh, 50, 50 divide now between the guys and the gals and the I gals know, are really, the ladies are really doing that are a great coming job. In and, our lady yeah, boss. Doing, a, doing a great job and an excellent job. I, I can't, we could probably put a pretty good little group together. It'd probably oh, be an yeah. amazing no group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, thanks so much. And uh, Martha, we'll see you in a couple of days. Um, yeah. Significance. Yep. That's exactly right. And, and, and building that legacy and putting that together and doing that for your family. Yes. Yes. That is, that is kind of the, one of the top check marks on that list. So thanks so much for being with us this week, Martha. Thank you so much for what you do for Note School. And uh, well, we will see you all next week. Same place, same time. Have a great rest of your week.